Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick update before going on to the serious content of my video. Well, unserious, but uh, more relevant content for most people. Um, anyway, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, the reason why Guy and I are working together is just uh, right now he seems to be having some internet problems. I know I made an update saying he's going to work with me and I haven't made any videos with him so far. So just letting you know that we are working together, it's just um, he's been having some internet difficulties, so I, I haven't been uh, able to talk to him lately. Um, so anyway, on to the video. So um, basically, uh, I, I just want to start out by saying that good science is consistent. That is the same principle that apply to one situation, the same logic, the same uh, points that apply to one situation should apply to another similar situation. So, um, if your theory uh, explains one thing, but it doesn't explain another, you know you have problems. And that's why you see uh, in my videos, I use the opponent's own logic in different situations to see if they stand. Uh, I use evidence to show that their logic is not consistent. And I'm going to do the same here. And uh, this uh, video has to do with gay marriage uh, and the fundamentalist uh, view of it. Uh, fundamentalists use a particular moral argument against gay marriage uh, that generally goes as follows. Uh, number one, um, the parts uh, fit naturally for a man and a woman, so God is allowing it. Two, uh, sex is pleasurable, so God wants us to do it. Three, sex between a man and a woman results in procreation, so God is instilling purpose. So using these observations, fundamentalists of all religions, uh, including uh, Hinduism, my own religion, uh, judge uh, what is sin and what is not sin. Uh, if you are ha having sex for pleasure and not for the potential procreation, then that's sin, according to these fundamentalists, because that's not what God intended. If your parts don't fit, that's sin, because that's not what God intended. Well, this same argument should apply to other natural uh, phenomena. So let's see if your logic still holds. If God created everything in nature, including our sex parts, then he also created opium, poppy, and coca, and marijuana plants. He created tobacco. He created um, hallucinogenic uh, mushrooms. Now, it's not just a coincidence that, coincidence that ingesting these plants and their extracts have such a strong effect on our psyche. Morphine, for example, is a natural compound extracted from opium, and it fits into specific receptors in our brain. Like, specifically, it very tightly binds to these receptors. And that's because our bodies make their own morphine, make their own uh, compounds called endorphins, which morphine mimics and binds to those receptors very tightly. Now, this is a very direct example of parts fitting, right? So, just like with a man and woman, so according to that logic, in this very similar situation, God must be allowing us, uh, uh, God is allowing us to use morphine. Now the same is true for coca, for marijuana, and tobacco. These plants create compounds naturally, we didn't make them, the plants make them. So, according to fundamentalists, God wants them to make them, and they fit perfectly into na natural receptors in our brain and so God wants us to use you know coca he wants us to use tobacco according to that logic now uh, using cocaine for example gives us pleasure just like sex does so according to that same logic God wants us to use cocaine now one of the wonderful effects of these drugs is addiction since addiction is a natural result of the use of the drugs, can this be considered purpose? Now, doctors say tobacco is bad for your health, but what do they know? God made tobacco addicting, so he must want us to get cancer, according to that logic. Fortunately for science, it does not rely on such futile, inconsistent logic. Evolution explains addiction, but more importantly, evolution is consistent. It is so consistent, in fact, that it is capable of making predictions in the future. Religion is not. 
You can't tell me what God is going to do next. You can't tell me what form God is going to appear in. You can't tell me why his morality apl applies in certain situations and not in others. You can't predict uh, in your situation what God would do. Now, back to evolution. Um, these predictions are so accurate. They're so good that um, they can actually validate the legitimacy of the theory of evolution when we use a mathematical equation called Bayesian inference um, and I'll link to that uh, video so you guys can see it's one of my favorite videos that I've ever made so I suggest you guys watch it. Um, another really good attempt um, at uh, showing inconsistency in fundamentalist logic uh, is a video by Osmoroid called uh, God Heals Amputees um, which I will post. I'm not gonna give away uh, what he's talking about but you guys should see it. It's really, really good. And those are actually my favorite kind of videos where their own, or the person's own logic is being used against them. Because sometimes evidence doesn't work. Fundamentalists are so ingrained in their way of thinking that showing them scientific things doesn't work. The best way, in my opinion, is to use their own logic against them. So that's what I try to do.